Welcome to Los Angeles. Um, I'm happy to introduce you to my dear friend, Dina Sheldon. She's not only a wonderful woman, but she's one of the best camera persons uh, in our industry today. Uh, she has an impressive curriculum, won nine Emmy Awards, is nominated for the SVG Hall of Fame, and his, she has been shooting uh, from the Kentucky Derby to the Super Bowl, to the presidential election, and you name the other events. Dear Dina, you are one of the few women in a world which is dominated by males. How hard has it been for you to enter this world and be so successful? Well, thank you for inviting me here to join you. We came all the way, you and Jacques came all the way from Italy to join us over here. Thank you for this invite. Um, a lot has stemmed from my parents. My parents taught me to go after anything I wanted to do. And there were no boundaries. And there were no limits. And at 13, I saw on Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live, I saw a camera operator on a Chapman crane. And I said, back then, that is what I want to do. And so when I didn't look at the, the limits that there weren't any women in the field, I just knew straightforward that I wanted to be a camera operator. I wanted to be outside. I wanted to be involved with sports and government events and live concerts. So I decided then that that is the, what I was going to pursue. When, when I saw that, and I never saw that there weren't any women, I just knew what was I going to bring to the table. I was going to bring the work ethics that my parents taught me, and I was going to bring preparation. Um, to always be prepared for whatever event I was going to do. So say it was a football game. Since I didn't play football, what was I going to bring to the table? My love of sports, my love of live events, and my love of numbers, and how fast I could get to the shots that I was trying to achieve. So when I saw that they were, I, I never really saw that. I was very proud that I was entering into a field that was very male dominated, but it wasn't a goal to achieve that, it was a goal to be a part of it, to be a part of that team. So what would be the advice you could give to uh, the many girls that are attracted by uh, the e event and the and shooting world and that would like to make it? And uh, what is the approach they will have to take it? Uh, I, from what you said, it is preparation is a top, top, top uh, important topic. But it's, it's a, a, an, a, an idea that there's a trust. So if you have a reputation, and I'm always grateful when a director, a producer, or a client invites me to do their production. So there is a level of trust, whether I'm a male or a female, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So therefore, the trust brings response, I feel, a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I am going to perform as to the best of my abilities, I'm going to practice, I'm going to be ready, but I don't take um, I take that very seriously, whether it's a male or a female. It's a competitiveness that I want to be better than I was the day before, that I will compete to myself to get to a shot faster, but also I've been entrusted to do a certain camera. So it takes the, the male and the female out because um, no matter what it is, and say it's a male or female director, very few uh, female directors that I've worked with over my years in sports was actually just one, Kathy Barreto. And but I have a sense of respect when the, the male directors ask me or, or I'm ready for something, there is no lines of male and no, female. No. And that kind of trust is, I take that you know, to heart to perform um, with that. So it's, is it exciting to, well in 40 years, there's been one female that was added, that was it. And, and you encourage other women, but it's, uh, it's a tough field to get into, but my goodness, you just hold on to it and, and always know that there's someone right behind you. So you never slack off. And it's also to emphasize the work ethics. That let their work, let my work speak for itself. So you, you come in with that as the forefront. Your work ethics, being prepared, understanding all your equipment. Because when you're out on, on camera, you're responsible for everything you do, from your equipment to your whole situation, your known challenges, your unknown challenges, always practice. 
to make sure that in a live event anything can happen and you're ready for it. So when other women are seeing how do I break in to this sports world, let your work speak for itself. Start at any level. Start at the cable level. Start at universities that have AV departments. Get your hands on as much equipment as you possibly can. Learn everything. Go, go early, stay late. Understand the equipment, most importantly, so that you can know how to handle it. But it, it is about the work ethics that um, I believe is the forefront. Wow. And uh, this brings uh, um, the topic on, you have uh, seen cartoony equipment and you have got us uh, uh, the chance to test it, which is already a very uh, nice and big achievement for us because uh, industry leaders uh, uh, are used to certain equipments and they wouldn't want to change for anything in the world because they are not confident on what the equipment could, you know, uh, reflect on their work. Uh, but you were, um, you know, brave enough to say, give it a chance. And please tell me, what do you like about our, our equipment and what would be the suggestion for the future to improve it? First of all, you have taken the Cartoni name, even from your father and your grandfather, from Renato and Guido, you have taken that name and have really gone through every part of the film and television industry. You have promoted the most beautiful technology, the highest technology. So you bring me to the word confidence. When I get on camera, the one thing you want to do is to be able to create. But if you're concentrating on your equipment, will this pan head be more like an etch-a-sketch? Will I, when you can have the confidence in your equipment, you're, you have the freedom to create. The Magnum, your cartoni magnum is the silkiest, the smoothest pan head I have ever found in the world. I put that on and I don't think about it. I balance it. You've created it. The technology is unbelievable because on the digital readouts, no matter what location I'm at, if I'm high in the stadium or low on the field, whatever my payload, I can dial it in perfectly. You set it to zero and you just keep adding all your cameras and lenses. The payload on that is like 66 to 209 pounds. So anything I put on there, I can balance beautifully. But it is the confidence and the ease of the movement. When I want to achieve a shot, especially at the end of my lens, which is going to be very tight and very smooth. Say I'm um, on the cart and I want a tight shot of the quarterback on the field. I'm going to push the end of the lens of that, except I'll back off a little bit, you know. But I don't want to think about that. And your magnum provides it. I just get on it. I can shoot the craters on the moon. And if, if the moon is moving, which it does, I can just go with it beautifully and gently. So that is the ease and the confidence that you're not thinking about your tools. Any, if you're thinking about it, all of a sudden they're going to come to you live. You only get one shot. There's no do-overs. So you have one shot to make this shot the way you want to do it. And that's, it's the smoothest pan head out there. Well, that's wonderful what you say. And is there any advice you could give me? What, what else would you, you, would you like to see in the next uh, technologies and the next products? What, what, what could we research more to um, help the, 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 the camera or persons uh, behind them? Because from the Magnum, you also have the Focus 22, which you've um, given me the opportunity to try. What I love about it is just teaching folks, uh, just sharing with other operators how to set it up. If they're used to the other pan heads and there's no fine tuning, then they, don't, they may not know that it just needs to be fine tuned. And then you're set for the entire game or the event. At the inauguration, right, there's very little movement. You know, if the, the newly elect president is going a little left, a little right, you just have to do that and no one needs to see the camera work. And that's the thing, you don't want to see the camera work, you want to see what you're, what you're shooting. And if there's any movement that's not smooth, then the eyes of the viewer, I think, go to that. So I think it's teaching other operators that this is, it's magnificent. You know, when you hear other operators that may not be getting the, the shot and you're, you're kind of seeing, because we watch each other's work, because we want to see, hey, um, learn from other operators, I think and to spread that knowledge on how to set these up is a beautiful thing because you also have the 200 on the, uh, the Sport 200 tripods, very easy to set up. 
very easy to secure to whatever you're working on. On the Focus 22s, that's a one-man band, a one-woman band to set up, um, very easy to carry around. So I think you've really kind of advanced to that. I think it's just sharing the knowledge. And um, now that uh, the shooting te technologies are evolving so much, too, so we have electronics everywhere, and we have uh, the cameras are moving by themselves. And um, do you think that the, the person behind the camera will lose a little bit of uh, its importance now that everything is automatized? Funny that you should bring that up. My partner, Jeff Zachary, and I have gone in that direction. We've gone to the robotics because we take um, our camera experience and we both have 40 years in this industry and we say, what else do we want to see? What other angle did we want to see? So we developed RoverCam and BoCam. And with that, with the robotics, put the robotics and take the person out, the operator out, but the operator is behind the controls. So you want somebody with a knowledge of what they're shooting, but I think it's a wonderful transition um, to take what we know and, I mean, a long time ago, they put the robotics in turn four of the Daytona 500 because it was dangerous. They put it on the Kogan thing. You had to start taking people out of dangerous situations. And that's when we started putting robotics in there. But then we've taken it to the level when Jeff and I do it for a golf event. We did it for the US Open and PGA Championship. We had the robotic going with the, the players, with the golfers. It wasn't us out on the course with them. It was the robotic. It looks high tech and it takes the person out so they can stay within their field. I, I always believe that the field and other things is very sacred for the athlete. That is their area to work. So I don't want to step in but if there's a robotic thing, first of all, it looks great, right? A robotic thing that comes up to them, then um, a lot of them laugh when it comes up. I think they want to feed it. But it kind of still keeps their territory, their area sacred to them so that they can concentrate. But I, oh, I do believe that it's not going to replace, but I think people can advance the different technologies that they know how to operate. Sure, it's like uh, talking another language. It's uh, becoming more creative. And uh, the good news is that uh, my team is studying uh, robotics a lot. Uh, we are not ready yet, but we will soon come out with something. So the first to know it, it will be you <laughs> and Jeff. <laughs> so thank you, darling, for being with us. And it's really always an honor to have you and a pleasure. Well, you are such a trailblazer. You have stood there. There's, there's no other company that is owned, CEO, and run by a woman. It's just not out there. So you are, are so inspiring to so many that you take a professionalism to another level. You do not get, you just, I just see you staying calm in meetings. I just see you going through in, in, in a direction that is truly inspiring to other people. So you have set the example. You're the trailblazer. And you will be the first to know. <laughs> <laughs>